Good morning and um, welcome to my video series setting up Lotus Domino 8.5.1 on OpenSUSE 11.1 64-bit in um, VirtualBox 3.0.8 on Microsoft Windows 7 64-bit. This is part 8, installing Domino and I'm your host Devin Olson, so uh, let's tear into this as quickly as possible. Let me start the server right now, or start the virtual machine right now. Um, <coughs> of open uh, SUSE. Um, get that up and running. And I guess I want to boot from the hard disk, and I want to boot from that. Okay, while that is actually doing its boot, let me uh, talk about a, a few things real quickly here. If you've been following along in the series, we've uh, we started with a base installation of um, VirtualBox. Um, we set up VirtualBox, got that installed, then we created a virtual machine. Then we went ahead and installed the OS, OpenSUSE, and then installed VirtualBox Guest Editions. We created a network bridge and installed shared folders. And then we did some pre-domino installation housekeeping. And along the line, I've been taking snapshots within uh, <coughs> excuse me within VirtualBox so at any point if I need to I can go back to my machine so let's uh, step over to the OpenSUSE environment and it's just finishing its boot up now all along I have throughout this entire series I've been signing in manually as root but if you recall in the in the very last um, part in this series during the pre-domino installation portion we actually um, we created this uh, this user and this group this group called notes we created a user notes and that's the command we actually issued to create the user and we set up that user to automatically log in into OpenSUSE when SUSE started so the by default OpenSUSE starts no login no password necessary and it goes to this goes to this notes user so that's where we're at right now I'm gonna go ahead and open this in a open a command window here and the reason I wanted to have it go directly to the notes user is because on this virtual machine on this laptop when I fire this server up I need it running and I, I don't care to mess about with it so I'm gonna come right in um, and if you're in a production server environment this is probably the way to go simply so that if you do have a power outage or whatever and your server has to come back up it can just come back up you don't have to actually be there at the console so here we are in the at the uh, command window here and what I'm going to do now is I need to go to the uh, folder so let me uh, change focus here see uh, domino and install and um, the last time when we were in there, we extracted this tar file, and so I can cd to my Linux folder, and uh, I can cd to my Domino folder, and uh, there's the install file that we're going to run. Now, at this point, I can't, but I shouldn't try and run it as uh, the notes user, this user that I'm currently signed in as, simply because this user doesn't have the appropriate rights to run this. So I'm going to change to my super user and for those of you who know Linux this is no big deal. For those of you who are new to Linux, say you're a Windows user, um, it's quite easy. I issue the SU command which means super user and uh, this basically tells the operating system I want to log in as root. And so now it's asking me for the root password and I go ahead and enter that. And there, now you can see the, the user ID that I'm logged in as I'm, I'm root. And what's cool about, uh, at least, I, I first noticed this in OpenSUSE. Um, um, it may have been around for a long time, but I think it's totally cool, is that when I'm, when I'm changed to the root user, my, my command line here is bright red. So it's a nice visual indicator that I'm bright red. Some other systems, um, the good, um, Red Hat, if I recall, and a few other Linux distributions. When you try and change to the super user, you get a big warning. Hey, uh, you're the root. Be careful.